So yesterday I flipped the boat over so that the hull is pointed upside down. The reason being is I knew when I got the boat that it had a few dents in the bottom. The previous owner didn't have a very good trailer for it. So what I did is I started on this side here and started sanding with 60 grit with my orbital sander and then by feel and by uh, my measuring board I was able to figure out where the low spots and the high spots were. So this side, the starboard side, is actually in pretty good condition. You can see where I have the fairing compound is basically where there were dents from the previous boards that the owner had in place and then a few other imperfections. So what I'm doing is I'm actually using a polyester fairing compound for this um, just to fill in the thicker spots. And then if I end up glassing over this, then I'll use any, I'll use uh, something like uh, Jamestown Distributors fairing compound, the epoxy to do any little fine imperfections. But this is kind of a Bondo type material that I purchased over at um, Revchem. I'll come over here real quick and show you which product it is. It's the Featherweight by USC. Now a lot of people don't recommend using the Bondo type materials with the car fillers because they believe that they absorb water. And that's not a concern for me because after I sand it I will be putting epoxy resin over the top. Whether I use cloth or not, I don't know yet. There are some areas that seem a little bit soft. Uh, there is a little bit of movement and I might end up putting some 6 ounce or 10, 10 ounce of epoxy over the top. But regardless, none of this actual um, fairing compound will be exposed to water after I epoxy it. Basically what I do is I go on first with my 60 grit with the orbital sander, go back and forth and do a lot of X patterns and get it nice and neat. You can see here, if it focuses properly, just a couple little scratches that I still need to fill in. But all in all, did a really good job. Then I put on the uh, fairing compound, let that cure for a few hours. Then I'll go back over it with 60 again and then take a look and see what else needs to be done. You can see on this side, this is what I'll be doing this afternoon, I still have a few holes left in here, 11 on each side from where I bolted down the, um, the wooden strips inside for the new stringers. And I knew I'd have those, but um, it worked a lot better to bolt them down, epoxy them in place, and then remove the bolts. And of course, I'll fill those up. And then I have a pretty major area up here where, I don't know if you can see it with the camera or not, but I've got some depressions here of about an eighth inch to a quarter inch that I'll be sanding out and then filling with uh, fairing compound. And then when I'm done with that, I'll be putting, the, the class rules allow a bead of uh, thickened epoxy between the um, mahogany rail and the, uh, and the hole to give it a little extra strength. So I'll sand that out, put a bead of epoxy there, and then fair it again. And um, the next video I'll shoot is when I'll be putting the um, primer on here, some sandable primer I got from West Marine. And then I haven't decided which brand of paint I'm going to use yet, whether it's going to be an epoxy or a polyurethane. This boat does stay out of the water, and you do have to do a color sand on it to make the boat as efficient or to make the hull as efficient as possible. But I am definitely going to keep with the uh, fire engine red. I get a lot of compliments on this color and um, it looks really good. Never thought I'd have a fire engine red sailboat, but that was the color when I bought it and I've been really happy with it so far.